What's up, my beautiful fine people? What are y'all up to? What are you doing? I'm hanging in the woods, hanging in the woods, hanging in the woods. So I sprayed, 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 sprayed my clothes, sprayed, sprayed, sprayed. Because like I said, I cannot stand creatures, little creatures, ticks, fleas, that kind of thing. It's just so nasty. So what I want to do today, and I don't see a lot of people talking about this, but it needs to be talked about. A lot of times narcissists will sucker test you. And what I mean by that is they want to see if you have boundaries. They want to see if you are going to fall for the nonsense that they're trying to pull. Okay. And y'all know about the recent one that tried to pull it with me, which wasn't going to work. I'm not put, I'm not going out of my way for somebody who I don't even know your ass. And, and frankly, I don't have to go out of my way for you either. You know, I don't have to do it. I don't have to go above and beyond. I just don't have to. I don't know you. Okay. Now, if we were engaged or married, that might be a different story. But somebody you don't even know and you want them to put their self out of their way for you. Psh, no, that, that's not going to work. So for those who don't know, I'm talking about a dude that saved my number for many years, acted like I'm supposed to be really impressed by that. Yes, oh yes, oh yes. I'm impressed by the fact that you had my number for many, many years and never utilized it. That makes me so excited. My heart is beating so hard right now with excitement. Uh, bleh, boring, he sucks, and no. Um, just kept saying that, like, oh, well, I saved your number, so we must have clicked some kind of way. Oh, we clicked so well that he never utilized my number until he felt like utilizing it, which was way after the fact, after I gave it to him, way, way years, years later. And like I said, for those who don't know, he wanted me to go out. I don't know him, never met him in person, wanted me to drive long distance at night to an unfamiliar area to go to some stupid show with him. And then after the show, you know, he's going to try to run game. All right. So I'm going to wait until it's later and later. We're going to go to the show. This is how he's thinking. I'm sure we're going to go to the show. And then after that, we're probably going to grab something to eat or something. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to make sure it's late. Might try to get her to drink some alcohol because people are a little more uh, uh, willing to do things with alcohol. They put their inhibitions down. So, try to get some alcohol squeezed in there, which doesn't work because I don't drink. Nice try. And then since it's getting later, I might as well say, which I'm sure this is all part of his plan. I'm not dumb. Well, you know, since it's getting later and we both have a long-distance drive, we might as well get a room, hotel room. Now, if I was stupid enough to fall for all of that, that wouldn't be the first time he tried it, and he knows that he has a major sucker on his hands. She don't have any boundaries. She's going to put herself out for somebody she don't even know. So it's open season now. So people will test you. There's a book, a very good book called Why Men Love Bitches. Okay. Very good book by Sherry Argov. A-R-G-O-V. Very good book. And it addresses that very topic of men trying to run game. Men trying to make you go out of your way. Um, she gave a few examples in the book. One of which was. You know, it's severe weather. There's a true story. She put it in her book. Um, severe torrential rain. Real bad storm. And he got the nerve to call her up, you know, and ask her, hey, would you mind coming over? She's like, oh, yeah, that, that's no problem at all. He said, I'll wait for you outside. So he waited for outside. The, the you know, the um, weather was horrible. And um, she never showed up. Because she knew she was being sucker tested. And he wasn't having it. So he got mad at her, cussed her out, you know, texted her, called her, whatever, and let her have it. I, I got real sick. I was standing outside in the rain waiting on you, blah, blah, blah. He fails to see how disrespectful that is. I'm going to lay up in my bed like the king that I am, because God knows their egos are huge. Women's egos are huge too, don't get me wrong. But we're talking about men right now. Um, I'm going to lay on my bed like king of the mountain and you're going to come over here 
with torrential rain you can't even see the road it's raining so hard and if you risk your i know you're willing to wish your risk your life for me because i'm that amazing and it's just stupid it's just you're going to put somebody in danger you know i know of a uh i know someone who the guy wanted her to pull the same stunt and it was a snowstorm oh why'd you come over here and see me you know it's kind of hard to stay warm in the winter time get an electric blanket that'll keep your ass warm so there's ice and snow on the road, and he was trying to entice her to come to his house. See what I'm saying? You're being sucker tested. You are being sucker tested. Don't fall for it. Don't go for it. And don't you dare. Don't you dare go out of your way for somebody you're not in a serious relationship. You're not engaged. You're not married. And if it's a, even if you are any of those things, and it's a one-way deal, meaning you're the one who's always going up above and beyond, and that person's sitting on their throne, you need to reevaluate whether you're supposed to be with this person. People will sucker test you and they would do it time and time and time again. But if they know in the beginning that you're not having it, they're going to slither away and go find somebody else. Usually, especially if they're a narcissist, because they know that you're not having it. There's no advantage to me driving long distance to go see your ass. I never even met you in person. And I was so amazing that you never bothered to utilize my number, but I'm supposed to be impressed with the fact that you saved it. Okay. The other person is supposed to be so impressed that you want her to risk her life on ice and snow for you. Okay. The minimum that he's going to do is leave the door unlocked. So you could just prance up in there while he lays there with his fingers interlocked behind his head with a smirk on his face. You risked your life going to his house. No, it, no, no, uh, -uh no, you fell and bumped your damn head is what you've done. And truth be told, if you are in a serious relationship with somebody, they wouldn't want to put you in that kind of jeopardy. Even if you are engaged, you are married, they're not going to want you to be put in that scenario. Babe, I want to see you too, but the roads are nasty. I don't want you traveling in that. But I want to see you. I want to see you too, but I'm not going to risk you being wrapped around a tree. So we'll, you know, we'll catch up with each other next time or tomorrow. Let's look at how the weather is tomorrow and we'll see if it'll work out better that way. That's what a considerate person does. Do not get sucker tested. Okay. Don't do it. The chick that I got rid of who was insistent on getting a married man. She, he wanted her to fly to a hotel where he was visiting um, a friend from out of town. He wanted, I'm keeping an eye on my baby. He wanted her to fly to where he's at in a hotel, meet him in a hotel so he can dust that butt and send her on her way. Was she considering it? Of course. Was he ever going to leave his wife? Of course not. And then she had the audacity. He's lying and tricking and thieving. And she had the audacity to tell me, don't tell his wife. So, so, so she's still, I can't talk. So she's still protecting him. He's lying and cheating and, and maneuvering and manipulating. And you're protecting him still? Sucker tested. Sucker tested. Milo! Hey! I gotta go. Y'all take care.